into the vertical black. I'm building my first Atari 7800 homebrew game called Into the Void. And I built a demo of it, and I got a first level and a boss done. And then I decided I didn't know enough about the capabilities of the Atari 7800 to continue as I started to work on some other things like scrolling backgrounds and special effects. What I didn't really know was if I was doing things in the right graphics mode, or my sprites were the right size, or how many sprites I could actually expect to get on the screen at once. You know, I'd heard stories when I was a kid, uh, when I, in 1984, that the 7800 could put as many sprites on the screen as you wanted. But I, but I know from reading the documentation for um, Atari 7800 Basic and the Atari 7800 um, Programmer's Guide, but that's actually not true. Um, the Atari 7800, what it does is it splits up the screen into zones, either 8 or 16 pixels high, and then calculates how many sprites you can fit into those zones. And usually it's somewhere between 10 and 20, depending on how many other things are going on the screen and how long it takes to write. All your sprites are put into what's called a display list, and that display list then uh, when you go to draw the screen, things are drawn, and anything it can't actually draw, it won't draw. So, there's some options in Atari 7800 Basic that make it a little bit easier to draw things. There's a, um, a way to do a double buffer so that um, basically the uh, program will wait until it can draw everything and then draw it to the screen, and it smooths out, smooths out animation, which is cool. So, knowing that there were different graphics modes, there's a graphics mode called 160A, 160B, 320A through C. And I wanted to find out exactly if I was doing things in the right graphics mode and it, how many sprites I could actually expect to get on the screen. So I started by building this first demo, which is called 160A Zone Height 8. And I built a little test app. And what this test app does is first, it shows the zones on the screen. So these are a couple background graphics I created. Um, well, it's one, it's 80 pixels wide by 16 pixels high and draws some lines to show uh, where the zones are, the eight, eight pixel high zones. And so right off the bat, that background is actually going to take up a couple of my sprites. Now, 7800 allows you to, or at least 7800 basic, allows you to save and restore a display list that then you can um, you can display on the screen. And this saves you some time of trying to write a bunch of static sprites to the screen. So I've saved and restored a display list um, for this background. I thought that this would be outside of the sprites I could get on the screen, but it turns out it's not. And you'll see on the next screen where we get rid of it, what, what that means. But for right now, I've built this little application. And if you press right on the joystick, you'll see that you can add a sprite to the screen. And if you press down, you can add a row of sprites to the screen. And you can keep doing that. And if you watch the bottom of the screen, the, the first number is the number of sprites across. And the second number is the number of sprites down. And the third number is the number of dropped frames. So that's the number of frames that the 7800 dropped while trying to draw the screen. And we're trying to keep that number as low as possible, obviously. Um, the fourth number means that there's a, if there's a one or a zero, meaning there's a background on the screen. And the other two numbers we will save to talk about a little later. So right now, we're gonna keep adding sprites. And we're gonna say, okay, we've got five sprites across, six sprites across, seven sprites across, eight sprites across, nine sprites across, 10 sprites across. Now we're gonna start going down, 10. So we're gonna fill up we're at nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. And you see we're starting to drop sprites. Um, we're up to four, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22 lines right there and now. Uh, we have 10 sprites across, 11, 12, 13, and there we blow up. So then we gl glitch out. We know that we kind of um, uh, we kind of push the Maria chip on the 7800 too far. So we can go back, but actually, um, once it's glitched out, it's not um, it, you're not assured to go back and be able to start the program again. So let's go back, and I'll start the program one more time. And we'll go through. And that was the first one. You saw um, how many sprites we get across the screen. Now let's go to the second, the second demo, which is removing the background. 
So let's go now. How, how many can we get across the screen? Well, there we are. We've got about um, 11, 12, and then down. We're still dropping frames. We're still dropping frames. You know, we you can see that like with these this these eight pixel high, we're not gonna we're not gonna fill up the screen with sprites. That's for sure. Um, but how many can we get? Six, fifteen. We're getting more sprites than we did without the background, and I bet it will glitch out on the next one. So let's see if we can go to the next screen. Okay, so same thing, um, but now we've animated the sprites. So with animated sprites, you're gonna see that, how far can we get across? We get to, a, to about um, 16, and then everything blows up. And down, and you'll notice with the animated sprites, they will animate. We're gonna start dropping frames. You'll see we're at four, five, six, seven, eight. It starts animating much slower. Um, and you know what we really like to do is um, let's look at the same thing but with the background we're going to probably be pretty much the same and then we gl glitch out with even few fewer sprites all right so this one now we've got the animation turned on and now we have double buffering turned on and double buffering like i said before allows you to um, get more sprites on that allows you to keep the frame rate steady but you notice i started to put five frames there and we already glitched out and blew up now we got double buffering with the background and we're gonna see how far we can go. We only have five sprites per line. And you'll notice we only drop three frames this time, but there'll be a point at which we glitch out pretty quickly. And that's what we got. Um, so now we're back to the first one. And you notice, so that's with, that's with eight pixel sprite zones. Um, for the game I wanna make, it might work, you know, if we have animated sprites, we get about eight across the screen in each line, but not at that size. So try a different program. No, I had to make this a second second program because um, to test out the sprite zones because Atari 7800 Basic has to do a lot of changes to the code for whichever zone height you choose. And so you can't just change the zone heights um, as your program is running. So let's look at the same demo again. Here we are with the background, but here we are with that background. And we're now showing 16 pixel zones, um, not as finely detailed, but you'll notice that on this first screen, we're able to actually fill up the screen without glitching out. So that's pretty cool. Now we did drop three frames, you'll see at the bottom. The background is turned on, um, but we got, you know, we've got 10 by 10. We can actually go and get another one on here too to make it 11. We we'll probably even go get 12, but if but if you um, it, that's that fills up the entire screen. Um, but let's go. Let's let's say that a game that we're going to make is going to have a score and some other controls at the bottom. That, that screen looks that that 10 by 10 you know, pixels looks pretty good. That's 100 16 by 16 sprites on the screen at the same time. All right. So let's go to the next one and we'll get rid of the background and we'll see what it looks like. Here we are, we've, we've dropped four frames. Um, now let's see how many more, so that's filled up, but you know what, what's the question is, how many more do we get on the screen besides just the 10 across? Well, let's see. I've drawn a spaceship for each one you can get, and we're at 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. So isn't that interesting? We can get 20 sprites right now across the screen with a fully rendered background and 10 sprites on top of it in each zone. I mean, that could make a pretty amazing game if that's what you want to do. Um, but let's go to the next example. And now we've got the animated background. And here we go with the animation all the way across the screen, all the way down. And you'll notice we've now dropped four frames or three frames Animation slowed down a little bit. How many more can we get on the screen besides the animation? One, that was kind of a little glitch there. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 
So 10 with the animation is on top of the sprites, but you see it gets a little glitchy when we try to do it. So let's go to the next one. Um, so this is with the background doing the same thing. So it's animated. We're going to fill it up this with the background behind it. And then how many extra sprites do we get? Well, we keep going, but again, we get the, it can do it. We've dropped five frames. Now that's as far as it'll go with the background on there. Um, it will not draw any more. So that's as much as we get. Now let's turn on double buffering and see what happens. So we're animated, no background, double buffering. You'll notice that we drop a lot less frames and we get one, two, three, four, four, and then we blow up. So four, with double buffering, we get four extra ships besides the background, or four extra graphics besides the background. And we don't, we're not necessarily gonna have an animated background the whole time, but this just gives us some options. And um, we, get about, we get about 14 sprites per line before things glitch out. And then let's try it with a background, and I think we're gonna see probably two extra sprites plus the background. So we got a whole thing, we're only dropping three, we get two extra sprites, three, three, two sprites before we, we blow up. So, uh, now let's do another little example with an explosion that would actually probably be in our game instead of that, so that, that colors. You notice what I've done is there, um, I've tried to put as many colors on the screen as I can just to show um, how colorful the 7800 can be. Um, so now we'll see explosions this is double buffer. We're about the same with the background with explosions, and that's as much much as we get. So now we're back to the beginning again. And so what I've decided to do is do the 16 by 16 sprites. If they're not all animated at the same time, and we are double buffering, um, we should see a maximum between 14 and 20 sprites on the screen, and that should be enough for a great side scrolling game. So that's what I'm going to do. So next up will be uh, another demo of the side scroller called Into the Void. But this is how I came to that conclusion. I had to just sit down and build a tool and try to test this stuff out for myself. If you're interested in this tool, there'll be a link to it in the description and also on atariage.com. Thanks. Into the vertical plane. An 8-Bit Rocket Studios production.